Autumn Journey. I'm on this train trundling toward the coast. I'm headed from central Tokyo to the seaside town of Zushi. On this late afternoon weekday, my carriage and the rest of the train is nearly vacant. Back in the summer months, when the sea was warm, the carriage was full of suntan lotion and straw hats and the sounds of bronze laughter. Now, as autumn deepens, a different kind of person heads south toward Zushi's dark volcanic sands and the haunting hovering of fork-tailed kites. The train in autumn is like an abandoned amusement park. It's lighter. You can feel it in the motion of the carriage, which shimmies with a bit more fervor, and you can hear it in the pitch of wheels less committed to track. If you could slow things down, you could better see the sweet small faces of trackside homes, and if you're like me, you'd probably imagine the lives behind each blank window, feeling a bit guilty for cutting across their space. But no one seems to plant anything to hide their lives. There are occasional slices of green to be seen, where nature has filled a neglected crack with volunteers, tough tensil grasses, or a fast-growing polonia tree. Restless September, all the shadows in your backyard catch trains. At a normal speed, the scene would slip by almost too swiftly to see. A palette knife smear painting of beige and burnt sienna, a concrete blur of apartments, industrial buildings, arching structures, struts, electric wires, and rails. Railway weeds. How many children lost in tailwinds? Sitting in this mass of iron motion, so refined and fast, as if in response to the varying depths of view, I find myself wondering odd things. How can humans survive so much urban density, for example? Or how much of this journey could I walk if I had to? And how long would it take? If I had to build a train from scratch, could I? Sometimes, like an unexpected argument, I catch a view of myself or of trains close passing on opposite tracks. At times, a train traveling the same direction appears alongside. It's like a fateful encounter, a slideshow from a time forgotten, of people I feel I ought to know but no longer recall. Cloud storage, where infinite memories safely evaporate. When you are in this parallel space, the train passengers appear so peaceful, focused inwardly, masked and already muffled in fall clothing. This floating scenario, so strange, tenuous and rare in the world these days, has a profoundly calming effect. Faces on the metro train, along a leaning hedge swaying moonflowers. Just as the seasons can slip one into another hardly noticed at first, I find the day has changed tint and hue, and the landscape is gradually more open. Windows glow with life inside as light in the sky outside burns toward ashes. The worst part of a train trip, though, is the end, when I have to gather up the physical parts of myself and leave the place of passive motion. There's the ticket, the bag, the stairs. But when the trip ends at the sea, disembarking becomes a soft segue into a different kind of travel. And there is always the train home. Autumn coolness, the sea's sound of arrival. Shush, shushing. <laughs>